So uh, we've got the chassis on its side, chopped it up so we can work on one side at a time. And I'm fitting the uh, coupling rods. I've had to take all the nuts and bolts off so that the bearings are split. Make sure you get them the right side. They're, they are handed. That one's got the recess which goes in that boss. So I can fit that part round there. That's a nice snug fit. We'll do the same again on this end. I'll just uh, run the nut up to hold it in place. I have a second nut there as a lock nut. And then we push those through. Run the nuts on again. These are split bronze bearings, so if you get any play in these, you can split them, you can clean them back to take out any play. Yeah. And while they're bedding in, you can leave them loose with the lock nut. Um, just lock the two nuts together uh, with a little bit of clearance, and then when it's bedded in, you can tighten them up again. But let's have a quick check that that's going round all right. Yeah, that should be going past the centre, okay. So now we're fitting the uh, con rod onto the cross head, and the pin goes in from the back through these two holes in the, the uh, con rod. I get it over the cross head first, and then just winkle the, the little cross head pin in, like so. And then there's a lock nut to go on the front. There she goes, and you can hold the uh, pin solid with a little screwdriver while you run the, the lock nut up. And then we come to the uh, big end, and this you've got the two bearing brasses lubricating these to be going to the top. And we can move that one just to set the uh, bearing brass is right and run on the, uh, the lock nuts same as the uh, coupling rod So that sets the con rod in place and we've still then got to set the, um, the piston but it's not hitting the cover at either end. We can adjust it here if we need to. If it hits the cover then you need to uh, adjust the piston into the cross head a little bit more. So you've got the adjustment on there. Would you get the other side on first, all the other rods on the other side, and then the valve gear, and then set that? You might as well, yes. Yes, this is just a preliminary check that we're not miles out. It's still going past centre without clouting anything. Excellent. Okay. All right, we'll do the other side. Turn over and do it again. So we've adjusted the um, piston rod, and we're just running up the lock nut. And we've got about four mil from the end of the thread to the lock nut. And I'll just nip that out. We do that both sides and then we can wheel the chassis along and just make sure everything clears. And next on the agenda is uh, the way shaft. Once yeah. again with the um, uh, breech rod pin on the right hand side 
Then we've got um, socket cap screw, a washer, a spring washer, and a nut to go on each one. I've taken the uh, little split bearing brass off the bottom of this uh, radius rod and I'm about to fit it onto the top of the die block there. I've taken the tape off and just check that the die block runs up and down nicely. And we've got some split pins to hold that in place. Very small one mil split pins are. Yeah. Just to put one of those through to make sure it holds. Right, and then we should be able to turn it round so we can put the bearing brasses on. the top one, and that's the bottom one, and the bolts run right through with a double lock nut on the bottom. Oops. Hold that in together. run the second lock nut on up and to tighten them up. So next we're putting in the valve and the valve rod. So that's the valve rod. We need the gland nut on it and the o-ring. That then goes into the steam chest. One drive collar. and the valve itself, which is just dropped in, and the other drive collar. The theory being that the valve is retained by the collars, but can lift or move a little bit side to side. Let's do the land up. And we'll get a temporary setting on the valve. The grub screws should uh, tighten on this little flat that's machined on the top of the valve rod. There we go. So that will operate once we've put the valve, the extra valve rod on, which goes there and there. <coughs> and there's some, some pins to do that. We're putting the foot plates on both sides while we've got the engine upside down. There's a, a little mounting bracket that goes each side to hold the uh, front of the foot plate, um, and that's on uh, a couple of four mil screws. Get them reasonably tight. Now, next one up. That's it. And then there's three mil socket cap screws all down the end here. That block takes the brake, and there's a couple of screws to go in the end there. And they're uh, Phillips head, aren't they? Yeah, cable yeah, socks. Like it. Into that big block. Yeah, 
everything on the back of the foot plates flush because we've got the wooden block buffers to go over those. So do the same on the other side. Yeah, and then the other side's to go on. And we'll have to start having a look at the brake gear. Having got the foot plates in place, we're now on with the brake gear. So the shoes are on the hangers. The hanger goes on to its bolt. So the wheel lines up with the brake shoe with the, the uh, lock nut on the inside. And the same again on this one. We've then got this uh, cross shaft and the pull rods that fit through on the side. And there's a set of split pins to go in to hold these in place. So the pull rods have to be uh, near the wheel so they don't foul the ash pan. And there's a back brake hanger which goes on at the back here. And this brake arm with the uh, nut underneath where the brake stand goes, it should uh, fit in here. Oh, looks like they might need to take the paint out of those. Yeah, I'm going to run a little file through those to clean them up a bit. <coughs> So these little uh, brake hangers that need to go on, and they need their grub screws in before we fit those. Okay. put all the split pins in to hold uh, the brake rigging in place and um, we've put the arms on the end of the cross shaft I've just got to flip the chassis and tighten up these grub screws um, and that's the, the basis of the brake gear all ready to go.